Hello, my name is Nick Mathis. I'm the Solar Project Manager here at the MREA. And here we are in the Energy Storage System Tech Center. Hopefully we can answer a lot of questions and some of the uh, mystique that surrounds our energy storage systems. Here we have the Panasonic Evervolt DC coupled system. And this is their version 1.0 and with their forthcoming version 2.0 which will be coming in 2023 this single unit will be able to be dc coupled or ac coupled and so instead of having our separate dc and ac coupled units here you're able to get all the functionality out of one unit like our other systems here we've got our inverter and our battery cabinet and inside of our inverter we have our standard overcurrent protection. We've got the connection for the batteries and the disconnecting and overcurrent protection for our batteries and our connection for the utility grid. And so this system is designed to work with, like most other residential energy storage systems, is designed to work with your standard 120, 240 volt single phase electrical service. So 240 volts means that we have a line one and a line two and a neutral and ground. But so what happens is that this is able to integrate with any residential electrical service as long as it has 240 volts. And being a DC coupled storage system, this is designed to take a DC input. So we have here at the MREA, we have 15 solar modules on the roof that are wired and come down directly into this unit. And so we've got DC power coming off of the solar modules, coming in and DC into the base of the, the wiring cabinet of the inverter. And then our batteries are also DC devices. So we have um, our DC to DC conversion happening. And then we still have the standard inverter capabilities that's going to take that DC invert it to 240 volts AC and we can back feed to the utility grid um, when times are good and if the utility get, grid goes out we're, uh, we're without utility power this can back feed 240 volts AC into a backed up loads panel so we're going to have a dedicated panel just to run off our batteries and so that's one of the really slick levels of functionality we get with these energy storage systems. So this is our inverter. So the main connection point for our solar, for a utility, for our backed up loads, and for our batteries all happens inside here. Then next what I'd like to do is take a look inside of the battery cabinet and see what's going on inside of here. Everything has been de-energized and isolated so that we can take a look in here safely. Um, so what we see is that it's the base building block of a lithium ion battery system is going to be just the small lithium cell. So this is the 18650 lithium battery cell that's inside this container. Inside here we have 351 of these battery cells stacked together and as you can maybe see here we have two battery modules stacked side by side so we have two battery modules here so that's 351 plus 351 and then up here again we have two battery modules deep stacked you can see we've got this metal bracket that's holding them in place so just with these four battery modules, we have over 1,400 of these little lithium ion battery cells. And an interesting feature of most of these lithium ion battery systems is the ability to stack them or to expand upon them in the future. So with this system, we have four battery modules, but we can stack it and expand with two more battery modules down here. We have left this space open and done a little bit of wiring inside of here, but you can see there is plenty of room to stack two more battery modules inside of there. Each of these battery modules has its own dedicated positive and negative output. And so we've got four wires going up 
to the four, four pairs of wires going up to the four different battery modules. And these are all running in parallels. And, and so this is a 48 volt system. Each battery module is 48 volts and that goes back to the inverter as a 48 volt system. You can see we've got smaller wires here and then on the output we've got larger wires because we're carrying more ampacity at that same lower voltage of 48 volts. And then another feature you'll see here that's common with our lithium ion systems is we've got a communication cable going from the inverter to the battery module. We can see this communication cable is connected to this single battery module up top and then that battery module is connected to the next one and the next one so they're all daisy chained. Or what happens with these lithium ion battery modules is that there's a lot of data gathering, communication, and control that's happening inside of these units. And so we have um, a battery management system, the ultimate brain inside here that goes over and communicates with all these different battery modules. Because each, each one of these battery modules is going to have multiple temperature sensors throughout it. It's going to keep data on what the operating voltage is, what state of charge is, and how much, it, how deeply it's been discharged, and how frequently it's cycled. And so uh, that's the base building block of lithium ion systems. And we'll see some systems will give you modular battery banks or battery packs, battery modules inside of them. And then other ones like we'll look at with the uh, Tesla system, it's one unit with a bunch of batteries stacked inside. Special thanks to Panasonic for their generous donation to the MREA Energy Storage System Tech Center and to each of our sponsors who have supported the ESS Tech Center and the advancement of MREA Solar Plus Storage Training Curriculum. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by the ESS Tech Center here at the MREA's headquarters in central Wisconsin. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on here and a lot of different classes around energy storage systems. So feel free to stop by midwestrenew.org and check out our training page. Our membership and participants in all of the MRA's activities are vital to the operations of, of the organization. We couldn't do what we do without all your support. If you're able to support our organization or any of our initiatives, uh, please stop by midwestrenew.org and take a look at all the different things we have going on and see if there's any way you can be involved.